Recently, the U.S. has been dealing with the effects of apocalyptic heat waves, but now it's Greenland's turn, with tracking website Polar Portal saying a melting event on Wednesday was the third largest single-day loss of ice in Greenland since 1950. Here's what you need to know. A massive melting event has affected Greenland's ice sheets during a heat wave that has brought temperatures more than twice as hot as seasonal averages, according to Danish researchers cited by Audrons France Press. Since Wednesday, the ice sheet has melted by close to 8 billion metric tons a day, twice its normal average rate during summer, according to tracking site Polar Portal website, which is run by Danish researchers. While this loss of volume was not as extreme as the largest single-day melting event in 2019, the researchers say the area over which melting took place is actually larger than two years ago. The amount of ice that melted on Wednesday alone was enough to cover the whole of Florida in two inches or five centimeters of water, and more than half of that mass will have flowed into the ocean, according to one climate scientist who spoke to Deutsche Welle. The Greenland ice sheet is the second largest mass of freshwater ice on the planet, according to Ajans France Press. It is made up of nearly 1.8 million square kilometers or 695,000 square miles of ice, second only to Antarctica. A study published in 2020 in the journal Nature stated that Greenland's ice is melting faster than at any point in the last 12,000 years, and a 2019 research paper in the journal Science Advances said that could add between 5 centimeters and 33 centimeters to global sea levels by the end of the century. The heat wave that caused the most recent burst of extreme melting is a result of a patch of high pressure sucking and holding warmer air from the further south over eastern Greenland, according to Marco Tedesco, a glacier expert at Columbia University who spoke to The Guardian. Linking these events to climate change, he added that although these atmospheric events have taken place in the past, they are now getting longer and more frequent. NASA explains that the levels of carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere have been increased through the burning of coal or oil, as well as the clearing of land for agriculture, industry, and other human activities. This makes the Earth's overall temperature higher, which in turn can cause sea level rise through the melting of ice like that in Greenland. Worse news still is that this process will perpetuate itself, Columbia's Tedesco told The Guardian. He explained that because the snow on top of these ice sheets operates like a protective blanket, once that is gone, you get locked into a cycle of faster and faster melting. It's amazing to see how vulnerable these huge giant areas of ice are, he told The Guardian. This is, in short, a bad story getting worse. According to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, global mean sea levels has risen in total between 8 and 9 inches, or between 21 and 24 centimeters, since 1880, with about a third of that coming in just the last two and a half decades. The rate of sea level rise has more than doubled from 0.06 inches or 1.4 millimeters per year throughout most of the 20th century to 0.14 inches or 3.6 millimeters per year from 2006 to 2015, and this is mostly due to meltwater from glaciers and ice sheets, as well as thermal expansion of seawater as it warms. A team from NASA has previously calculated that Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets together lost 81 billion tons of ice per year in the 1990s, compared with 475 billion tons of ice ice per year in the 2010s. This is a six-fold increase. In total, Greenland and Antarctica have lost 6.4 trillion tons of ice since the 1990s. A number of different studies, including one published by the Danish Meteorological Institute, now say this places us at the high end of climate estimates for sea level rises. The action we need to take is clear, according to Tedesco. We need to get to net zero emissions, he told The Guardian, and we need to protect exposed populations along the coast. Keep watching to find out why the world's largest ice shelf breaking off Antarctica earlier this year wasn't caused by climate change and didn't cause sea levels to rise, as well as how the latest heat waves affecting the U.S. were caused by climate change. These days, it's not that uncommon to hear people say the world is falling apart. But today, it turns out the world literally is falling apart. Here's what you need to know. The world's largest iceberg has broken off an ice shelf in Antarctica, according to the European Space Agency. The iceberg calved from the western side of the Rhone Ice Shelf into the Weddell Sea. At around 170 kilometers long and 25 kilometers wide, or 105 miles long and 15 miles wide, it is slightly larger than the Spanish island of Mallorca, according to the ESA, and almost four times larger than New York City, according to The Guardian. CNN reports that when this ice melts, it will not lead to a rise in sea levels because it was previously a part of a floating ice shelf rather than resting on land. This in contrast to glaciers or ice sheets, which do cause sea level rises when they melt, as they join the ocean having previously been resting on land. 
The formation of this particular iceberg is not believed to have been caused by climate change, according to Alex Brisbane, a glaciologist at the British Antarctic Survey, cited by New Scientist. However, considering the ongoing issue of melting ice more generally, which has been linked to climate change, according to The Guardian, CNN notes that if Antarctica's entire ice sheet was to melt, sea levels could rise by almost 190 feet, or 58 meters. Ice shelf carving may not directly cause sea level rises, but can do it indirectly. Ice shelves act as a buffer, preventing glaciers that sit on land from collapsing into the ocean and causing sea level rises, according to Ella Gilbert, a research scientist in the University of Reading's Department of Meteorology. When they collapse, it's like a giant cork being removed from a bottle, allowing unimaginable amounts of water from glaciers to pour into the sea, she said. Last month, the University of Reading released data from what it described as the most detailed ever study forecasting the vulnerability of ice shelves surrounding Antarctica to climate change. It said 34% of the area of all Antarctic ice shelves would be at risk of destabilization under 4 degrees Celsius or 39.2 degrees Fahrenheit of global warming. Alternatively, limiting global warming to 2 degrees Celsius or 35.6 degrees Fahrenheit would have the area at risk and possibly avoid significant sea level rise. What's your favorite part of summer? Hanging out at the beach with all your friends? Playing frisbee with all your friends? How about the killer heat waves that have come to destroy us all? If you went for option number two, the US right now has almost certainly been the place to be for the past few days. Here's what you need to know. A severe heat wave affecting 40 million Americans has seen temperatures over 100 degrees Fahrenheit beat records in Wyoming, Utah, Arizona, and Southern California, according to NBC News. It has two main causes, according to the Associated Press. First, a heat dome, or area of high pressure. Sinking air from the Earth's atmosphere prevents air near the ground from rising. That sinking air operates like a cap, trapping warm ground air in place, according to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Without rising air, there is also no rain, and nothing to stop hot air from becoming hotter. That high pressure works in combination with a two-decade dry spell that has sucked moisture out of soil in much of the western United States. Usually, some of the sun's heat evaporates moisture in the soil, but according to the Associated Press, scientists say the western soil is now so dry that the energy is instead used to make the air even warmer. As a consequence of the extreme heat, at least 14 new wildfires broke out this week in Montana and Wyoming alone. Firefighters also fought fires in Arizona and New Mexico, with U.S. Department of Agriculture meteorologist Gina Palma saying these were certainly conditions that we would not normally see in June. Power networks across the country have also been strained due to increased use of air conditioning, according to Reuters. Operators in California asked homeowners across the state to conserve energy in the late afternoon and evening when demand surges. In graphs published on its website, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency showed that heat waves like this are almost three times as frequent as they were in the 1960s, increasing steadily for over 60 years. Furthermore, the duration of these heat waves is now almost a full day longer. What we are watching here is climate change, and at least part of it is man-made, according to the Associated Press. A study published last year in the journal Science found that man-made climate change tied to greenhouse gas emissions is responsible for around half of the historic drought that caused the drying out of the soil. Added to this, NASA's website helpfully explains that human activities, such as burning fuel to power factories, cars, and buses, cause the atmosphere to trap more heat than it used to, which increases the Earth's average temperature. Now, of course, heat waves have always occurred. The American Meteorological Society simply defines a heat wave as a period of abnormally and uncomfortably hot and usually humid weather, which we all know was hardly unheard of before. But the point is this, if the Earth's overall average temperature is higher, existing factors like heat domes can more readily push us over into extreme heat, particularly as some defenses against that heat, like the moisture in the soil, are also taken away. Hence, you know, America keeps doing that whole thing where it sets on fire a lot, which it didn't really seem to do as often before. The consequences of all this are not just great action shots of massive fires on TV either. Reuters interviewed one Phoenix resident who described the situation in the U.S. right now as feeling somewhat apocalyptic, and they had a point. According to the WHO, more than 166,000 people in the world died due to extreme temperatures between 1998 and 2017. 
What's more, between 2030 and 2050, climate change is expected to cause approximately 250,000 additional deaths per year from malnutrition, malaria, diarrhea, and heat stress. The only response to this that is anything less than a collective death wish is a rapid reduction in fossil fuel use. Production of coal, oil, and gas must fall by 6% year-on-year until 2030 to keep global heating under the 1.5 degrees Celsius target agreed in the Paris Accord, according to one UN report. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.